Hi, this is Ginger Cook. And my daughter and I, Cinnamon, from Heart Party, you may have seen her on YouTube, had had a little bet that I couldn't do a painting in 15 minutes. And I said I could if I wasn't trying to talk to you guys, and I could probably do it. This little 8 by 10 canvas is a lesson. I'm just going to go, go ahead and do it anyway. That's the challenge. Can I do this in 15 minutes? And I've started my lap timer, my clock now. We've started the clock. So here we go. How's that? That's what I'm going to do. Painting in 15 minutes. We'll see how that goes. And in the meantime, this is just some sort of a little video blog that we're talking about. So the challenge with me, mostly when I paint on YouTube or on my regular online lessons, I'm talking to somebody and I'm not talking to you guys about what I'm doing. And that's a challenge because normally that's what I would be doing is talking to you guys about what I'm doing. But since I'm not doing that, uh, this will be interesting. So uh, the idea is that I'm supposed to paint this and chat about something else. And this is a little bit like standing on one foot and chewing gum and rubbing the top of your head and doing some other weird things. So just bear with me. You see these long periods of silence just because I'm going, huh, I'm not talking about what I'm painting. What will I tell you about? She says, well, just tell them about what's going on in your life. So I don't know if anybody cares what's going on in my life. Right now, you guys have met, uh, if you've gone under the Heart Party channel, you've probably met my daughter, Cinnamon. And uh, she does these marvelous uh, full-length videos and she's all fun and happy and she creates the sort of more of the painting party style of picture for the very newest artist. She's got a great fan club and people love her and which is kind of neat which we love too and uh, I probably shouldn't have done this with a palette knife. You know there's a good example of that. Look I put the plate right in it. should not have tried to do this with a palette knife in 15 minutes. That's all right. This was the challenge. I mean, what's a challenge if it isn't hard, right? This is going to be the challenge. And I'm going to get out another plate for mixing colors because this has just gone too haywire for me. That's all right. Got palette knife painting. No, I'm not going to talk about what I'm doing. I'm not going to talk about what I'm doing. I'm supposed to talk about something else. So we were talking about Pinterest, and she had found one of her pictures up on Pinterest um, by somebody else had repinned it, then claimed that they had it, that they had created it. You were talking about what to do about that. I don't know. There's, you know, what you can do. Sometimes, you know, artists get paintings from different places. Um, this particular painting I'm doing is way out of copyright. It was originally done in the 1800s. I thought this would be a fun one to do because I like the colors on it. I'm not claiming any invention on it. But again, I'm not talking about this painting. But I guess we are talking about stuff like that. So here we go. So that's that's what, um, anyway, that's what uh, kind of came out of all this was what can you do? And, of course, everything is, people may not know this, but the minute you paint something, it comes with its own little copyright. And, uh recently artists in the last say 25 years have found a lot of um, artists from overseas like in places like China um, not just them but places like China and they've had a field day with artwork uh, you know from the United States and then they they have something called what we call in the business art by the pound and They'll have stacks of the same painting, and they'll you'll see it. It's sold at a starving artist sale, and uh, it's always fun to go to a starving artist sale and see your own artwork up there that somebody has thought was good enough to have recreated and put on their thing. And I thought, well, you know what? Uh, my artwork, a rose by any other name is still a rose. People really have their own individual handwriting. And they have their own individual sense of colors and brush strokes. So a lot of times people don't realize that. This is all individual to you. 
This is all individual to you. So to imagine for even a second that uh, somebody could absolutely copy you, they just really can't. And that's why when you go to one of those painting parties and you're six, next to a group of people, if you know what I'm talking about, painting parties are a big thing in the United States. You, you bring your wine and some snacks and there's an artist up there teaching the class and uh, they run you step by step through a picture. And a lot of times the people that are there are, you know, kind of just, you know, well, mine doesn't exactly look like the instructors. Or maybe you've been watching something on YouTube and your painting doesn't look exactly like the instructors. And you know what? It's never gonna because you're always stuck with your own handwriting and your own pace of painting and how fast you do the brush strokes and, you know, all of this stuff. You're just stuck with all of that. How am I doing on the time here? Let me look here. i got to open the phone up. Five minutes and 30 seconds and counting. Five minutes. Oh, my goodness. It's going quickly. We've, oh, we've only been painting here for five minutes. So we'll see. We'll see how this goes. So I guess that's a good a thing as any to talk about is um, your own individuality when you paint, even if you're looking at something else. and and Because um, <clears throat> it's going to be there. It's absolutely going to be there. You're going to have your own stuff um, that's just going to be you. And I promise you, if you don't think this is true, have a little party for your friends. And one person write, I don't know, about three or four sentences, about anything, doesn't matter. Just have them use their handwriting and write something. Okay? And then the next, the next group of you, what I want you to do is um, I want you to write out, uh, take a... Maybe just photocopy that. Can you do that with your off your computer or something with a scanner? Just copy the and then everybody gets a piece of paper and sees if they. This is the trick. That's the trick. See if they can duplicate what was written in the handwriting <clears throat> and and have the person sign it. So they're going to try and do the signature too. Now, if you can't easily easily now that's the word here. If you can't easily duplicate somebody's writing and their signature, and you've been doing that your whole life. Why on earth would you imagine you could sit down at an easel and exactly copy somebody else's painting strokes in the first five minutes or even the next three weeks? It, you're going to come up with your own stuff, and that's got to be okay. So that's a, that's a good subject for a blog, don't you think so? Uh, yeah, I think so too. That's a good subject for a blog, is that why doesn't my stuff look like somebody else's? That, there, I didn't know what I was going to say, but now I know. Why doesn't it look like anybody else's? And... Like I say, there's a reason for that. Uh, absolutely a reason for that. And it's okay. You just have to let that go, you guys. It's going to look like yours. One time, uh, you may not know this about me, but I've been painting for about, I don't know, 40 years, professional artist, and people would ask me, oh, do you ever give lessons? Do you ever give lessons? That kind of stuff. And I'm like, well, you know what I discovered about lessons is that and I did a few, and I thought that you know, you're saying the same thing to the to a new person, but basically it's the same thing. It's a little bit like that movie Groundhog Day. It's just over and over again the same stuff. And I said, someday I'm just going to tell everybody everything at once. That's my plan. Everybody, everything at once. So this is what we're doing with YouTube and uh, with the, my online lessons. I get to tell everybody everything at once. Now, have I totally gotten away from having to start over and tell people stuff? No. Because, you know, there's always things that I feel like I need to repeat. You can't really tell everybody everything once, one time because everybody forgets. And um, if you imagine that when people go to the grocery store and they've forgotten their grocery list, all right, and they have to call home and say, what were we supposed to get? Well, if you can imagine now a painting lesson where there's just tons of instructions and so many little details, and the average person can remember about 10 things at one time, and that's not to say they're going to have it tomorrow. And quite, and this isn't a bad thing. It's just saying this is what works. Um, this is not a bad thing, but it does sort of work that way. So the, the, um, the challenge then being, the challenge is then, um, can I... Uh, remember on uh, just in one time what somebody said and then the other thing you got to remember is this words don't teach I could tell you all day long how to do something
But until you try it, and this is the key here, until you actually try it, it means nothing. It's nice. You might be happy that I can do it. Um, my brother and I used to go round and round about this because he would tell me something about the computer. It was back in about the early 90s. He'd sit there and we were all getting into our computers. And he'd, he'd say, this is really easy. I said, And I'd say, well, how do you do this? And he'd say, but I told you yesterday. And I was like, yeah, yeah, you did, but this is today. And I have no idea what you said. And <laughs> he would get so mad. And then he thought, he really believed, that's really hysterical when you think about it, he had this tremendous belief that if he... Um, told me louder. If he just said it louder, I'd hear it somehow. If he just raised his voice and said a higher volume, surely I could get, I would get it then. And I'd be back and I'd say, well, let me write it down. I'll write it down. But, you know, even writing it down doesn't help. What you have to do, and you guys know this with the computer, because you're watching this on a computer, you just have to do it a bunch of times. Maybe you have to write it down and read those notes. But it isn't until you've got some sort of repetitive memory going that you really understand what you were doing. Gosh, I can remember the first time I ever tried to use a mouse. I couldn't get it to do anything because it's sort of muscle memory. And this is painting, too. This is sort of muscle memory. Okay, this is absolutely muscle memory. Um, years ago, my mother had the bright idea when I was a kid that she would give me piano lessons. And you can probably tell that I get bored easily. I can tell by the speed at which I paint things. I get bored pretty easily. And, of course, the piano instructor grabbed those you know, not the little piano books out there, and then she started talking about the scales and where you put your finger. And so I was supposed to sit there on that piano and all day long go, do, 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 whatever we were doing. And I found about 10 minutes of that, and I was just over the experience. Now, nobody explained to me, and this would have helped tremendously, if somebody had explained to me why I was doing it, you know, but just, just to sit there and, um, you know, it's like counting clouds. I mean, why would you do it? Okay? I mean, I don't know. Why would you do it? So, you know, that was a, um, that was kind of a shock to discover years later that uh, the reason I was doing that was so that I would know exactly where everything was on a keyboard. Well, and then I would be able to, just with my eyes closed, find a particular sound coming from that piano because I had done it over and over again. Well, they'd explain that. I'm not, not saying I would have ever been, become a very good piano player, but I might have stuck with it a little bit longer because we know now that there's um, there are people in this world that when they're learning something, if you tell them this is how you do it, they're happy. They'll just do it. Okay? They're happy to do it that way. They'll do it. You said that's what to do? Sure. They will do it. And then there's a group of us that want to know why we're doing it. Why am I doing this? I'm just not going to sit here and do this for you. Why on earth would I want to do that? This seems dumb. And, and then you've got to explain it to us. And if you can't explain it to us, then we don't think... You may have a good reason, but if you're not able to explain it, it's just we figure there isn't a good reason for those kind of people. So good to know about those kind of people, which is me. Then what you really have to understand is that for us, you have to explain why we're doing something. So sometimes when I teach art, I go to great lengths to explain why I'm doing something. Because I want to know why you're doing it. If I was watching a video, someone painting, it doesn't help me. Just like what I'm doing now, I understand this is a... You might be interested, kind of making the time here. Let's see how I'm doing. I'm rattling off. Gosh, how close are we with the time? Will we make it? Maybe not. Let's see. Here's my timer. 13 minutes, 26 seconds. We're not making it. Um, we have a palette knife I knew was a mistake. 13, how could 13 minutes have gone by so quickly? This hardly seems fair, does it? It doesn't seem right. 13 minutes, what can I do? Um, what can I do in 13... Oh, no, no. Here's a little white on top of this. Okay. All right. I 13 minutes. Ah! Now it's probably 14. I've probably got two minutes left. Wow, and I was doing so good, too, wasn't I? You thought I was doing good, didn't you? Okay. I thought I was doing good. I thought I was absolutely doing excellent. I did. I thought I was doing excellent. Would you go for 20? I mean, this is the first time I've tried it. And then next time I, I won't do a palette knife, but I'm going now. I feel like I should do it. Though I sort of lost the challenge. I wonder what the babysitter or something. So I definitely lost the challenge. But I'm going for 20 now because I can see 13 is, 13 is just went by. So 15 is a close at hand. And um, 
So I want to make sure that I, um, like I finish this. So um, I'm going to just go ahead and uh, just put it like this. Put this out here like this. And see what I can get by with in a few minutes more. How long does this painting really take? It's an 8 by 10. Now I could have picked a smaller canvas, which I may do next time, and then I'll win the bet. We'll do a few of these and we'll see. Because the goal is, can Ginger do this in 15 minutes? And you have to admit, I'm fast. You know, do I need to be that fast? I'm not speeding up the video. This is real time. So this is a little discouraging, but that's okay. I'm not complaining. Probably sounds like I am, but I'm not complaining. I just don't want to think you to think that I am. I'm not going to complain. I will do it. Okay, so there's... Okay, so we're, we're getting there. Okay. Uh, not fast though, not fast, not fast, not fast, and then you wonder, haste makes waste, did your mother ever tell you that, haste makes waste, you know, and yeah it does, it does, no question about it, haste makes waste, but on the other hand, we've got this bet going, which I've obviously, obviously lost at this point, let's see, where are we, I should have put a bell, it should run, ring here, Come on, open up the camera for there. Here. There we go. 14, 16 minutes. All right. So we've lost the bet. I'm going to just go ahead and finish this. We lost the bet. I'm just very disappointed now. I was doing so good. And I, this was sort of fun with all the... Well, I'm not talking about the painting. I said that was the deal. We would, we would just do the painting and not talk about it and talk about something else. Like that. Not going to do that. No, I'm not talking about it. You know how hard this is not to talk about what I'm doing because that's what I do all the time is try to explain what I'm doing. Not complaining. Sounds like it though, doesn't it? All right. Well, that being said, um, we'll just see where we are with all this. Um, so we were talking before I got really interrupted by this 15-minute timer which actually didn't go off, but you've got to imagine a big bell went off and said, you lose, you lose, 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 you've lost. Big bell went off, you're done. You didn't do it, ha ha, ha ha. <laughs> okay, fine, I didn't do it. I didn't do it. I'm, now I'm curious, what would this, you know, I'm, I'm working as fast as I can. What can this be doing? That, uh, working as fast as I can to complete this the little painting here and talking about at the same time again it's like tapping your foot and um, singing and trying to chew gum it's an extraordinary experience but okay so we're saying that um, um, we've got to make sure that everybody can sort of see this camera seem a little bright? I have to take a minute and tone it down just a hair. There we go. Probably seems a little bright to me anyway. And Okay, so now more paint. What am I doing next? More paint. All right. So it comes down to this. It comes down to this. When you sit down to paint something, just say to yourself, every time I'm doing this, I'm gaining knowledge about something. Whether you've been painting for 50 years or 10 or 5 minutes, doesn't matter. You're getting knowledge. You get smarter about this all the time. And something you may not know about yourself is that you. everybody learned to draw when they learned to write. And that's, a, that's an interesting fact in itself. Everybody learned to draw when they learned handwriting. And if you were in one of those countries where they taught you something like Chinese or Arabic, you really have some mad drawing skills you may not even be aware of because a lot of those letters, you know, it looks to me like require lots of, you know, shape memory. Shape memory, where you remember what something is. And, um, you know, that can be very important. Shape memory is a good thing. And 
So since you already know that something's either a circle, a square, a letter, something, you've, you've already done the shape before, before that, that feels good. And then if you, again, we get back to handwriting. If you look at people's handwriting, you remember that no two people have the same handwriting. So if that's true, if that's true, no two people have the same handwriting, then your painting is going to look different even if you copied somebody else from theirs. It has to. And, you know, master forgers, you know, those guys that, uh, you know, they think that there's a whole bunch of paintings floating around out there that are not really Monet's and um, they're not really anybody's that they, that somebody just absolutely copied them. We have some technology now, x-ray machines and stuff like that, where people claim that, you know, that this is an original Van Gogh and it may not be at all because um, somebody, there are people on the planet that absolutely, just like they can counterfeit money, they can copy exactly a painting. But for the most part, this is not a skill that you, that you, you ever need to worry about developing. It just isn't important. Okay, so uh, let's see. What do I want to do next? What we're going to talk about next. Not talking about the painting. That was the rule. No talking about the painting. The painting's just happening. We're not talking about the painting. We're just talking about... We're just talking about the um, the topic of originality and um, whether or not your picture is when you do it is going to look like the person sitting next to you at a painting party or maybe a picture out of a book or whatever you found a picture is it going to can it look like that is it even possible and uh, the answer for me is that it shouldn't, and you should be glad. And then sometimes you can sit there and say, you know, I thought this was a great idea, and I thought this was a terrible idea. So I'm going to, you can be your own editor and say, you know what, I, I would never do that. I don't know why that person did that. I would never do that. <clears throat> Whereas when you're doing your own stuff, believe it or not, what happens is, um, there's a tendency to sit there and say, why on earth did I do that? I wonder if that was a good idea. I should call up five people I know and ask them if this was a good idea. Because I do that with everything else in my life. I'll ask them. I'll have everybody come over and look at the picture and will no longer be my painting anymore. We'll do it by committee. Because when, the minute you start asking somebody, it is not your picture anymore. It is the, now the committee's picture. And they, no two people see the same thing. Gosh. This is why eyewitness testimony is so unreliable in a court case, because no people see the same stuff. They just don't. And so if that's true, which it is, because I just told you it was, then when you start asking people about your picture, you invite in the committee. It's like asking people, where should I go on vacation? Um, well, how would they know? They may like something completely different. Than you do. Actually, that is pointless. Now, maybe they went to a place somewhere and they liked it, but you know, maybe they like to rough it and you want luxury. Or, um, I find that even vacation advice is fraught with uh, people who perhaps could, well, I would not really like their advice if I took it. So, at this point, I guess the, the video blog is. At this point, the purpose of this video blog is to say, well, okay, so if that's true, and it is, because I just told you it was. <laughs> Don't you love that? It is, because I just told you it was. That's true. Then, perhaps, I can give myself a break when I'm painting something and just decide that if it doesn't look like what I'm painting, it doesn't matter. Then the next thing to ask yourself, does it work as a painting? And then you're going to sit there and say, I intended to do this, and it didn't happen because my hand-eye coordination wasn't working the way I had hoped. Okay, and that happens. Sometimes your hand-eye stuff is not as uh, effective. I bet I'm in 30. I'm betting getting close to 30 minutes here. This is sad. I, I should just probably never tell you anything and just turn this into a speed painting. 
then you'd never know whether I did it in 15 minutes. But she would know. She would know if I did it in 15 minutes. This would be terrible because she would know. So what's fun about this little picture right here is that I think I'm going to give this away to somebody. And someone's going to, as long as you're living in the United States, I will mail it to you. Somebody's going to win this picture from me. Just my video blog picture. Someone's going to win this. Now, if you live outside the United States and you want to enter in my little drawing for this, it'll be free. I'll just give it away. What I'm going to say is this, that you'd have to cover the shipping, and I don't know what that would be. So, um, if 8 by 10 canvas. and we can. But if you did want to enter and you won, and you won, that's not saying you would win, but if you did win, then we would work something out on that. But mostly it would be for someone living in the United States. I would say that would be the best bet. And uh, this is a fun thing to do. I think that would be a fun thing with these video blogs. And I'm going to leave a secret message in this blog, and I'm going to leave it about right now. Secret message in the blog. And the secret message in the blog is, what? Let's help me think of one. Well, you're not here. You can't help me. So here, secret message in the blog is going to be, the secret word is going to be heart Sherpa. So just Sherpa. We'll just say the Sherpa. Sherpa, S-H-E-R-P-A. That's the secret word in the blog. And if you enter my drawing for this picture, and you mention the secret word, you're in the drawing. You have to have the secret word. And the only way you're going to get the secret word is to watch watch the picture. Now, hopefully, by this time, you're so captivated by my great wisdom that you're going to follow along and see what I'm doing. But if you don't, that's okay. Um, that's all right. I feel obligated now to... But what if you want it? Don't you want to know every little detail about how I did it? <laughs> Probably not. I'm just kidding. All right, so, all right, that's a funny idea, but I love it. Okay, secret word, win the painting. That's fun. Okay, secret word, win the painting. And um, what a great idea. So how am I doing on time? Now, what do you bet we're at 30 minutes now? I'm so sorry. Uh, I'm, at tw I'm, almost at, I'm almost at 27 minutes. Wow. I'm almost at 27 minutes and I'm still answering emails. So, well, we'll go back to the timer. I'm at 30 minutes and I'm not finished, but I'm almost finished. I think I can get it into 30. Hang in there with me. I'll put the clock back. Hang in there with me. I'm almost done, you guys. Almost done. So now, she says she's almost done. Let's see. Is she almost done? Hard to know. But we were saying I'm almost done, so I just said so. So let's see if that's true. And... Anyway, we're talking about copyrights and stuff and how that works. It works differently in the United States than it probably does in other countries. But generally artists, um, you know, like for instance, you'll see videos on here from particularly like I think of my daughter, the heart chirpa, and she's, she's putting this out here for free. She doesn't get any money to do it. She spends a lot of time doing it. Someday it may monetize for in, the, in, in, in some ads or something. But in the meantime, this is all free. This is all spec. And she really helps people. And I like to I like to paint and teach and of course mostly I'll be admit I'm the first one to tell you that I put out a bunch of videos because well, because I think it's important to be able to paint with acrylics and I think I do it a little bit else. I like I think acrylics are this age's paint paint. And I also have a, a, you know hundreds of videos that I've recorded, at least about 150, that I've recorded for the students to take lessons from me online. And um so I appreciate when, when people watch some of this and feel inspired and say, this is something interesting, and maybe she'll do it. But for the most part, people that put information on YouTube, they're doing it as really a public service. For the most part, it's a public service. And, and if we put something up on Pinterest, you know, um, it's nice to credit the artist where you got it. So, you know, this, this came from so-and-so. This came from so-and-so. It's a nice thing to do. Not, you know, just sort of one of those things would be, would be a terrible idea to do that. Um, just would be a nice thing to do. I'm working on 30 minutes cinnamon. I'm just almost there. And uh, you see, we're getting really close. 
But the thing of, no, I'm not talking about the painting. I said I wouldn't talk about the painting. I said I would not talk about how I'm doing the painting. Only about the painting. That's what we're talking about. Only about the picture. Uh, not the picture. Just about something else. This is the challenge. So we're not even discussing this. Okay, so we were talking about, before we got so really interrupted by my timer, and um, the fact I was running out of paint, which is kind of like talking about the painting, but isn't, all right? So why do people do this? They do this so that, you know, it's fun. And I'll tell you what, when somebody sends me a picture and says, this is what I painted, and then thank you for your video, this is what I've got, this is great. This is absolutely great to see what people are able to do with what we're putting out there. Cinnamon loves it. I love it. You know, we've been artists our whole lives. Uh, when I was, I was, uh, my mother was an artist. She did oil paints, and she did everything in beiges and browns. I'm telling you what, her whole palette was brown, black, beige. Everything that she did was that. And her, she sold stuff, but her comment was that that always went in someone's house. And you'll notice that I'm all about color. That's what I love. It's just absolutely color. I just love color. And um, that's, that to me, just just color just sings to me. And so, and I, maybe because the contrast, I mean, the contrast between when she decorated my room as a kid, she I, I found this wonderful, so I'll give you how old I am, I, I, there was these wonderful shag rugs that you could buy for your room decorated. And my best friend in junior high school had this bright orange shag rug, and it made her bedroom look so spiffy, and I wanted one so badly. So my mother said, well, what do you want for your birthday? And I said, I want one of those shag rugs. And she says, I'll keep that in mind. I'm not saying you're getting one, but we'll keep it in mind. You know, got to keep the mystery going here. So I was all excited about that, right? Because I really wanted one of those shag rugs. Just so wanted it. And... So what happened was, when it showed up, it was brown. It was like a light brown. And then she probably saw my face and just un didn't understand why. After all, I had asked for a shag rug, and I think I had even told her the color I wanted. But our whole house, if you think my mother's paintings were all in brown, guess what? Our house was in brown. And there, was a, there was a few green plants. Uh, maybe if they were alive. Yeah, you wouldn't have had a plastic one. Probably must have been alive. I'm trying to remember. We even had, going up to the house, instead of a flower garden, <laughs> it's a true story, we had some dead weeds that she'd gotten in Yakima, Washington, and put in old barrels, because then she never had to worry about watering anything. She thought flowers took too much time out of her life, because she, she'd had some earlier, and felt that that just was way, way too much trouble. She didn't want, didn't want to do that anymore. So she, um, so we had, everything was beige and dead. I don't know what to tell you. And, oh, yeah, dried flower arrangements. She was big on that, too. Dried flower arrangements. So, gosh, is it any wonder that I am just bad for color? Because as soon as I could escape the house of the brown and the gray and the black and the doom and the gloom, because it seemed like that, for me, color brightens people's moods. And you get into too much black and white and doom and gloom, and, you know, you're going to go for the doom and gloom. And I have to say that occasionally... There was a little of that there. There was a little of the doom and gloom here at our house. I don't know if it was intentional. You know, she was... Was my mother an optimist? No, she wasn't. Optimist like color, I think. Anyway, she wasn't an optimist. And, uh... Just like to tell you about all the terrible things that could happen if this happened and that happened it. Got to be very careful about this and that. She was kind of into that stuff. And, you know, when I first got older, I found myself doing that. And even my daughter pointed it out. She says, you'll just find the worst things in the news and send it to me. She says, do you realize you're doing that? I'm going, oh, I'm doing what my mother did, as we all do. But I did keep my paintings kind of, you know, bright and pretty. I have to say that. The paintings stayed bright. We're almost done. I think we can call this almost a win here. Almost a win. Almost done here. Um, almost. Almost done. Almost a win. And that's kind of fun. All right, so you guys know what the secret word is. It's Sherpa from the Heart Sherpa. Let me give Cinnamon a little plug here, because she's always plugging me. I, I'm terrible at Facebook. Everybody says, you should be on Facebook. Listen, I have trouble getting the stuff on Pinterest, 
you know, Facebook just rolls like a scroll, and it's very disheartening to me. I know everybody loves it, but um, it's a trick. I love Pinterest. My Pinterest page is Ginger Cook Live, all one word on Pinterest. That's uh, that's my Facebook page, and I I I I not rather my Pinterest page. I have Ginger Cook Live on Facebook too, but you know I barely put anything on. I hardly answer anybody. Um, it's just it's just not my thing. But that's okay. It can't be everybody's thing. Do you, do you agree? It can't be everybody's thing. But I love Pinterest, and Cinnamon loves Facebook, so she's always. That's my daughter's name, by the way. Don't you love it? I'm Ginger. She's Cinnamon, and my granddaughter is named Honey. So we kind of, that was fun. Granddaughter's named Honey. And um, almost done, getting there. Almost done. Almost done. Just almost done. Getting, getting there. Looks done to you too, I bet. The problem with being with me is, is that there's always something else. There's always something else I could be doing, you know, to um, to keep going with this. Always something. Well, when talking about the painting, though, that was the rule. No talking about the painting, talking about the stuff. So anyway. I try to be an optimist now. That's my goal is to be an optimist. Find, look for the good in others. Look for the good in my friends. Um, not Try not to sweat the small stuff. And if I get feeling a little down and out, I'll go paint. Sometimes I can do that. And sometimes painting releases a little bit of um, anxiety, depression. I, I know all kinds of people that... Um, didn't realize what great therapy painting was. They were shocked to discover that you could you could use um, painting as therapy. Uh, though there are such a thing called art therapists, but I'm talking about you just, you know what it is, you get into a zone. They always talk about these athletes being in a zone, but artists get in a zone. Oh, they do. Artists get in a zone. And when we're in the zone, time goes by like this little timer means nothing to me now. Nothing to me now. I'm no longer concerned about the timer. I do not care about the timer. Too bad. There's no timer here now. No. No timer. I'm just now painting. I have lost the challenge. So now I feel obligated, since I'm going to give this painting to one of you, to make it very nice. Right? Yes, n'est-ce pas? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Don't, don't write me in French, because that's it. I actually went to boarding school in Switzerland as a kid, and I was the worst student they had when it came to languages. Was terrible, terrible. Though you may not know this, but there's over 4,000 English words that are the same as French words. Maybe if they'd started with some of those, um, I might have gotten the language better. They didn't start with any of those, so it would have helped if I'd heard some of those words. I might have been heartened to try harder. Going, oh, really? So I just have to learn a few more. You've already got 4,000 in English. I just have a few more to go, and I'll be good, right? That's what you, you could have said that, and I would have been right there with you. Yeah, absolutely. You could have said that. I would have been going, great, just a few more. Just a few more. Super. Super. Just a few more words, and I'm I'm in good shape. Just a few more. Just a few more here, too. Okay, boop, boop. Oh, yes, a few more. My... Thing is not languages, but what you have to appreciate this, and I don't care what language you speak, anywhere in the world, people say, how many languages do you speak? And I speak all the languages because I speak art. And everybody would, that no matter where they lived in the world, would know that this was a um, painting of some flowers and, and an ocean, maybe. And uh, they would know that just by looking at it. And that in itself is kind of cool when you think about it. You know, somebody would absolutely know that. Seems like there's a lot going on here. My little things just feel so badly. I've lost the challenge now. But remember, we've got the secret word, so you're now up for me now, right? You need to write it down so that when you, when I post this, I will put the contest tent, tent information and the address of where to write to in the, um, in the description. 
so that you, if you want to enter the contest, because this is a free giveaway, living in the United States, I'll just mail it to you. I'll mail you the picture. Maybe I'll even include a postcard and write something nice on it to you. That'd be fun. I'm going to mail you the picture. That's, something, that's what I'm going to do with my video blogs. I love this. I think this is genius. Every once in a while I have these great mad thoughts, but I think this is a good one. I'm going to just do pure... Not, not telling you what I'm doing. Not telling you what I'm doing. You can write me on comments if you want to know what I did somewhere and what color I used, and I'll tell you. How's that? Ooh, that's even better. If you want to know, I'll tell you, but write on comments. I like comments. Um, I do. I really like comments. I'm almost done. Almost done. She's going to say that forever. She says, this woman's going to keep going on and on. Now I feel obligated to watch it. And I, 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 Remember, I, I didn't, didn't really do that to you. I told you the secret word early on so you could jump off if you just felt you were over the experience of watching this painting happen. Okay, so that's all right. I, I know you. I know you did. And uh, that is gonna be our picture. This is gonna be our picture. Almost. 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 Two. Almost. Okay. This is the picture. Almost. And I appreciate you guys watching. And this is my first video blog. <laughs> I'm laughing because I'm thinking, oh, I bet I could do it in 15 minutes. I'll make you this bet. And I'm never sorry I made the bet. I bet I could do it in 15 minutes. I thought I could. Ooh, there's the secret tube of pain. I'm not going to show you what it is. If you want to know what it is, write a comment and I'll tell you. I'll tell you. Ask me in the comments and I'll tell you what it is. I'll tell you what it is. Back in here like this. I'll tell you what the secret tube of pain is. All right. And hmm. almost done, almost done. I can't let you go with a painting that isn't perfect. That's the problem when I promised to give it away. Now I feel obligated to make it really nice. <laughs> I was just going to leave it here. I'm going, oh, it's good enough. Now, no, no. You guys talked me. You had to talk me into giving it to you. And then even if you didn't talk me into giving it to you, I'm going to blame you because I have to blame somebody. I certainly don't want to blame myself. So I'm going to talk to you, say that this is, and that you've given it to you. So, all right. That is going to be it, you guys. So this was fun. And you know, subscribe to my channel. You know, I don't do, mostly I just do paint lessons. I don't normally do blogs, but just, you know, subscribe to my channel and see what happens. This would be fun to see you up here and hear what you have to say. Like that, it would just be very nice. And I appreciate you watching. And I hope you guys have a great, everybody has a great day. Thanks for watching. This is the first. Ginger Cook video blog. Thank you. I'm going to just focus the camera. Ooh, back a little bit here. There we go. Thanks very much. This is Flowers by the Bay.